Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Marvel Legends 80 Years version of The Punisher, which is a whole lot of reused parts, maybe? I don't know if I'm not remembering where those arms came from, or if they're new. I want to say that they're not new, but they kind of match one iteration that I saw in the comics, so they might be new. Anyway, a lot of reused parts on this guy. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Well... Uh, no and yes. No, I don't know. It might be okay. It's kind of all right. I hated it at first, but the more I look at it, the more I think it's all right. So, I don't know. I'm also fighting back a sneeze here, so let's just go ahead and get the figure off the stand and take a closer look. Uh, this guy stands just about 17 centimeters to the top of his head, which makes him pretty close to, let's say, 6 and 5 eighths inches. And like I said, it does reuse a lot of parts. I do believe... Most of this is from the bad guy from Black Panther. What's his name? Uh, Killmonger. I think that's what this is from a lot of the, a lot of it, maybe? Anyway, I'm not sure that there's a version of Punisher that actually looks like this, and you guys who are big Punisher fans can let me know. Uh, but as much research as I could do without wasting a bunch of time is, this actually is a look for him just without the jacket. Like, I, I could find him with the vest and, like, this light armor underneath thing for the sleeves, but I never saw one where he's got, like, a full jacket vest hanging on, so it looks like he's going fishing. Maybe that's a thing you can let me know, but I couldn't find it, so that's a little bit strange. Does the jacket come off if you want it to? Yes. Does it look good when you take it off? I have no idea. Let's take it off and find out. There we go. Well, it does come off. And it doesn't look terrible. It'd be better if I had it in focus. It doesn't look terrible, honestly. It looks okay. The vest should definitely be thicker. It almost looks like a, like a t-shirt here, just with some patterning on it, so... That could definitely be better, but it doesn't look awful. The arms are all right. They're awfully thin, but they're not terrible, so that's okay. One thing worth noting from an aesthetics perspective, his hips and torso are kind of at a weird angle. You can see how much his lower torso wants to lean back, so you have to bring this part forward to get him to stand upright. If you bring this back to line it up, he's kind of, not kind of, he is leaning back. So that's that's a really weird sculpting issue. I don't know why they did that. Yeah, you can bring his hips forward, but that's going to give him this kind of arched sway back type thing going on. So that's a little bit weird. So maybe leave the jacket on, even though it doesn't fit well and this gets in the way. But uh, that's up to you. You can decide. The skull is painted wonderfully on here. I think they did a really good job there. The camo on the pants, surprisingly good. For Hasbro, I thought it was going to look a lot worse. It's perfectly acceptable, partly because it's all dark colors, but still, it's not bad. They did paint these magazines over here. They painted his two grenades, and that's about it. Not a ton of paint on this guy, but I think it's enough. We got a little bit of paint on the jacket, so that's all right. The face, uh, it looks okay. I don't know. Uh, I get what they're going for here, but he kind of just looks like he's been punched in the eyes. It's a little bit heavy there, but the beard looks okay. Yeah, it's all right, and then this head is also pretty good. I'll take it. I think that looks okay. As far as the proportions go on this guy, I thought it was going to be a lot worse. We're looking at it through the package. It looked like he had really broad hips, and they are pretty wide hips, especially relative to his chest, but they don't look that bad. I think the only thing that really stands out is how big of a gap there is between his legs, and I'm not going to make any jokes about that, but it there's a big gap. Like, that's not how people are built, especially when they have pants on, especially baggy pants. There shouldn't be a huge gap between his legs, and it gives the illusion that his, his hips are really, really wide. So that's not a great situation. He does also have kind of a long neck peanut head situation, but this is, um, this jacket does kind of alleviate that a little bit. And when I say peanut head, I don't really mean the head's too small. I think it's an appropriate size, but the long neck, the way it's done, the proportioning overall makes him look like he's got a really long neck and weird anatomy. So yeah, I mean, some people are saying how goofy it looks, some people are saying how cool it looks. I think they both have valid arguments, and I think both of those people are right for different reasons. So I'm gonna give this guy's, it's not a bad looking figure, so it's gonna be a mediocre on the good end of the scale, so I'm gonna give it a seven for the aesthetics. For the accessories, we do have the jacket, which doesn't really count. We have the two different heads. We have the bandana head, and then we have the face mask head, eh, not mask, face paint head, and they both look pretty cool. I like them both, and I think if you're into Punisher, you're probably gonna be okay with either of these. And then we have three guns. We have one 
uh, like M16 style gun. We have one, I don't think that's a realistic looking sniper rifle. Nothing I can think of looks like that, but maybe there's one out there. And then we have a pistol and they're all in this weird, like taupe color, which is kind of strange, but that's a thing. And that's it for accessories because the gun in his belt is molded in. We got a pistol accessory for him and they still molded one into his belt. Just don't. Just don't. If you don't want to give us a gun that's functional in the belt, fine. Then just make it a non-functional holster without a gun in it. And then he can hold the gun and guess what? It looks like he's taking it out of the holster. Putting a stupid non-painted molded in gun while he's already holding another gun is just asinine. <sighs> Accessories, I'll give him a six out of 10. Only because of the gun. It should be higher. They got two heads, three guns, a jacket, but you know what? Screw them. I'm taking points off or putting a gun in the holster permanently. That's stupid. It's non-justifiable. Stupid. So stupid. Okay, on to the articulation. The head leans all the way back. That's really nice. It does lean pretty far forward as well. And of course you can rotate it. No real attitude in there. The bandana doesn't rotate either. That kind of sucks. It should just be a straight peg that holds it in. The shoulders don't go quite up to horizontal, but they go pretty far, so that's all right. Do a full rotation, bicep swivel. I want to say these arms came on Killmonger as well. Uh, is this whole body Killmonger? I didn't get that figure. I'm not collecting the movie figures anymore, so I don't I don't know. The only ones I get are in the in the waves that include comic figures. Uh, arms have double joint elbow, that's fine. Wrist swivel and hinge, that's fine. You already saw the diaphragm joint. It's not the best we've ever seen, but it's functional enough. No waist twist. Oh, there is a waist twist. It was just stuck. There is a waist twist and a floaty belt, so that's okay. These hips go pretty far out to the side, better than most Spider-Man figures. Legs go pretty much all the way forward. Not really any waves back. Thigh swivel. Double jointed knee, which is really cumbersome. I really wish they would start rounding these corners off. I explained this a little bit in a video the other day, but if you don't make these squares, see how that's a flat line right there? It looks so much better when the legs are bent. And, and when they're straight, yeah, they pinch in a little bit at the knee, but when they're bent, they don't look so god awful terrible. So I wish they would do that. And I hope that was all on camera. I realized it was kind of not centered after I did it. And then for the ankle, we have really good range going back and pretty good range going forward and a decent enough ankle rocker. So this figure is not all around terrible or anything like that. The articulation is pretty solid. I'll give it an eight. I will give it an eight. Yeah, I guess so. It's pretty good articulation for Marvel Legends figure. So yeah, it's not by any means a bad figure. In a lot of ways, it's better than most Marvel Legends. It has a lot of paint on it that's pretty well done. The articulation is pretty much standard. Uh, but the accessories, having the molded gun in there is just offensive. There's no reason to do it, so they shouldn't be doing it. So I'm going to give it a final verdict of 7. Those of you that really liked it, the look of it, go ahead and get it. I think you're going to enjoy it. Those of you that thought it looked really goofy, well, you're probably going to see those issues once you buy it. So I think it's by no means a bad figure, but it definitely has room for improvement. So yeah, go ahead and get it. If, if you are into, in, into this kind of thing, then go ahead and grab one. If you're not, then don't, because... It's, it's one of those figures where it's not one that you really need to have, but if you wanted it, you're probably going to be happy. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and probably consider subscribing. I have new videos up just about every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.